Mm, all right. Now imagine this, my dear viewer. The year is 1962. All is not well within the world. There is a crisis in our midst and tensions are high. Now let me introduce you to comic books, one of the first forms of media introduced to both adults and kids alike, a form of media that now at this point has been entertaining and inspiring generations upon generations of families for over half a century. From characters who flew above the clouds to dark vigilantes that protect their cities to team-ups that you could only imagine in your wildest of dreams. Of course, we're talking about superheroes. The superhero genre has been, and in my opinion, will forever be the most digestible, relatable, and crucial genre that has ever graced our entertainment sphere. And while that opinion could be a little muddied now when you look at the cinematic side of the superhero genre, and in fact that manga has really put comic books in a chokehold over here in the West, whatever reason that might be, when you fast forward to the year of 2023, there's truly no character like the character we're talking about today. A character so popular over 60 years after being introduced. A character that every kid wanted to be for Halloween at some point. A character that made your eyes light up and open wide when first seeing him swing through skyscrapers and walk on walls. Of course, we're talking Spider-Man. Now in 2023, we haven't had a lot of different iterations done, well, for a lot of different superheroes. Charles Xavier is Professor X. Bruce Banner is the Hulk. Clark Kent is Superman. And Peter Parker, well, was Spider-Man. And rather that was for better or for worse at the time, those times are over. And while I don't want to say that going forward, it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows or even if that was done in the past. In this specific instance, I can easily, confidently, and definitively say, this is for the better. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is incredible. And the first big screen adaptation of Spider-Man, that's not Peter Parker. Meet Miles Morales, a half black and half Puerto Rican Migo from Brooklyn, who got bit by a radioactive spider in the sewers of well, you know that part of the story. Into the Spider-Verse follows the new origins of this new Superman. There's no Uncle Ben, no Aunt May, no Mary Jane love interest. And I swear to God, if you even mention that with great power comes great power. Comes Don't great you dare finish that sentence. Don't do it. So let's just get into it. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is the first movie out of what I would mostly say is a trilogy of films. But who knows at this point? Watch Miles Morales, a character I literally just briefly explained and highlighted some of the differences between the characters of him and Peter. And well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, but we'll get into that. The main story follows the characters of Miles and Kingpin. No, not the one that got his face turned into lasagna by Echo. Oh wait, never mind, scratch that. But this kingpin, a different kingpin, a blocky kingpin, recruits the help of Dr. Octavius. No, not the one that died to the sun, and no, not the one that got nanotech technology from the MCU, but this Doc Ock, a different Doc Ock. This one is a lady. To build a super collider, a device that can either shape or pull in or push out, mesh together. I don't really know, it's not really explained, but it can do either of those things to people or objects from different realities, all with the motivation of, Let's kill my family. you simply gotta love it. In a fight gone wrong between the original Peter Parker Spider-Man of the Miles Morales timeline and Kingpin, much like in Spider-Man fan service of the MCU, different Spider-Men, different Spider-Women, and well, different spider everyone is pulled into Miles' timeline. And with the original Peter Parker foiling the plans, but unfortunately dying in action in the aftermath, it's up to Miles Morales and the newly brought in Spider Gang to steal a goober from our villains 
and to launch the Super Collider again to all return home. But will the weight or responsibility of being Spider-Man hold too much for Miles? Will he be able to handle the double life of the city and his family? Or will the different past of the Spider-Gang hold them back in defeating Kingpin, erasing them from reality itself? You see, while there's many things that this movie has going for it at a fundamental level, the real driving force of this film is truly the character of Miles Morales himself. I mentioned earlier all of the clear and surface level differences between the two characters, but it's so much deeper than that. While it's been more of a complaint that I've seen starting to appear more and more recently, Peter Parker as a character is always shown in some form of tragedy, especially on the cinematic side of things. We're truly never watching our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, and I think that's why so many people have high hopes for the fourth Tom Holland iteration. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, that's not the case here with Miles. Unlike Peter, Miles is a popular kid in Brooklyn, has a family that loves him, and a future that honestly is as bright as he wants to make it. To put it frankly, he's a kid. Not a lot of stresses or obstacles that he's had to overcome yet. And that's a Spider-Man I feel like we've never really gotten before. And let me tell you, it's fun to watch. And while that's not to say that there's no tragedy involved in the movie as a whole, I mean, it's an origin story. You get to watch Miles be Miles for a good chunk of the movie, and that really makes you, as an audience member, watching a new character, a character that you might have some reservations on due to personal bias and love for the original, actually care about this new and different origin story. The happy upbringing that shows Miles as Spider-Man in the tragedy that makes Miles Spider-Man. And while the Uncle Ben story nowadays can be seen as a old tale, a relic from the past, the story of Uncle Ben and Peter is timeless. So legendary and effective from a storytelling perspective that it's gone down as one of the best origin stories in the history of superheroes. And let me tell you, it's better than not getting absolutely obliterated by a space rocket just to become a super saiyan from the power of being a woman. Is that like a personal attack or something? <sighs> oh god. Man, Plank, what have they done to you? But the reveal of Miles' as Uncle Aaron to be one of the Kingpin's henchmen, the Prowler, sent to track down and kill the Spider-Men, and the inevitable meeting of the two in their respective hero and villain role was nothing less than heart-wrenching. We're talking... <laughs> this is a dynamic that we've never really seen or felt before in previous iterations of big screen Spider-Man. We've seen friends be put in danger. We've seen loved ones and family members put in danger. We've seen tragic loss through the times of watching Peter Parker. But again... It just goes back to Miles' character and the storytelling framework put behind him. Uncle Aaron, Miles, and his father, all having different dynamics and different relations to each other, are still family nonetheless. And you see that in full effect when the events of the origin story take place, not by only viewing the experience and the character growth through Miles, but his father as well. And without that, I'm not so sure Miles' character would be as effective as he is. But man, now I'm starting to feel like Peter Parker. Let's get into the fun. The group of spider people that they select to accompany Miles in his origin story are a fun gang to watch. Hence, the Spider Gang. From characters that actually have arcs of their own and future potential, to my personal favorite Spider-Man noir, or even a pig. Spider pig, spider pig. Does whatever a spider pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, we can't. He's a pig. Look out, he is a spider pig. Yeah, man, it's crazy. They really missed a golden opportunity there. Peter B. Parker, Spider Gwen, or I'm pretty sure it's Spider Woman now, or maybe it's always been Spider Woman and I was messing up. In the lady iteration of Doc Oct are all welcome additions to the franchise of big screen Spider-Man 
or spider people, all playing their respective roles to almost perfection, with setups being laid before us to eventually be paid off in further films, alongside the addition of Miles still being the main focus of the central narrative. Now this, this is storytelling. Please take notes, Marvel, because your character introductions so far in Phase 4 through Phase 5 have been shit to slightly less stinky shit. The animation obviously goes insane. Some could probably say that it could be overwhelming at times, especially once you get into that final boss fight. Not overwhelming in the sense that you can't visually follow, but overwhelming in the sense that there's too much going on that you really can't take in the full gravity of the situation. Only the visuals. You'll see that done in anime plenty of times, with the main example being Demon Slayer and the lack of story that the anime has adapted so far from the manga. But obviously with the gloriously styled animation and beautifully choreographed fight sequences, it soared to anime to the heights as one of the most watched anime in the world right now. And that's not always a bad thing. I personally like Demon Slayer and also like this movie. It's just going to be very interesting to see how the animation style plays out in the next couple of films. Seeing how this movie seems as if it's going to be the more grounded version of the two films out right now. At the end of the day, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a great origin story of Miles Morales. And with the second movie across the Spider-Verse in theaters right now, it felt only right to give this movie my first rewatch for back-to-back -back viewings and back-to-back -back videos. So of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video and make sure to like the video as obviously that helps out my smaller channel grow and subscribe to the channel to come back for my review of Across the Spider-Verse. I've heard a lot of good things and most of the time, sequels are always the best. Most of the time. So it should be a fun time. Of course, as always, make sure to comment down below how you guys felt about Into the Spider-Verse. Don't comment down stuff about Across the Spider-Verse yet, not even just for myself, but mostly just for other people that haven't been able to go watch it in the opening weekend. I'll be able to go watch it tonight when I'm filming this video or after I'm doing this script, but just for other people. And of course, again, thank you guys for watching and like and subscribe to the channel. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.